What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel, After Sound here, bringing you some Genesis League content today. Genesis League sports, as well as the Genesis League goals white paper. And while I, I'm probably going to list this as a deep dive, I'll let you know right now, I don't plan on going through and reading this entire thing to you or going through every single aspect, but I did want to cover what is coming up with Genesis League goals. Obviously, I'm recording this after the pack sale has already begun and it did not sell out right away. So this uh, packs are going to be available for a while. But this this came out literally last Thursday as I was getting onto the plane uh, to head to Chicago. So it's been it's been a bit I wasn't able to dive deep into it over the weekend, but uh, I did get a chance to read through it several times and uh, and wanted to cover some of the things that I am excited for when it comes to this game. So let's just go ahead and go jump into the game overview. I don't think there's anything here on the on the introduction. So this is going to be a two-player dueling card strategy game, player deck building based on MLSPA roster of players. Now keep in mind, this will not have any, anything to do with the teams. Um, and so we know that there are going to be turns. It's going to be simultaneous single tap actions. We'll get into all of that. And then you're going to have player up cards that are upgradable in two different ways, which is cool. And then coach cards, which I'm trying to figure out if those are going to be similar to summoners. Like maybe you need to have high-level coach cards to play high-level player cards. I don't know what the deal is, but uh, those coach cards are going to provide you with formations and additional buffs and all of this fun stuff. So the gameplay is probably what I am most excited for in this game, because as I have been saying, I do believe that the team is looking at what are what are the issues that plague Splinterlands, right? And how can they go through and really improve and expand upon that? One, to make a better game that can't be like bottable, but two, to make something that's actually fun and along the lines of what soccer slash football should be, right? So uh, let's just jump through this. So uh, you're going to need a lot of cards, which is actually kind of interesting, but again, it makes sense, right? So teams consist of 11 starters, but you can also have up to nine substitute players during a match uh, and up to 10 reserve players that can be swapped in between the matches. So I guess when you make your deck, you're going to have this like ready to go team that will be that will be your team as you go into battle. So it's not like different splinters, right? Where every game you're going to get to choose a splinter. You're going to you're going to build your team and you're going to have like a go-to team uh that will be, you know, what, whatever you want it to be uh between between games. So managers will get to compete uh or will compete to get their club, <clears throat> excuse me, promoted through the ranks to the championship cup while avoiding relegation to lower league. So this sounds like it could be similar to, you know, um, <laughs> what's that called? <laughs> like bronze, silver, gold, right? Maybe they'll just have different areas or different names for it, right? Like champion, premier league, whatever you want to call it. Um, and so again, we don't have much information on that, but the player cards are going to come in different foils. We will get into that in a moment. The coach cards, uh, each team will need a coach. So again, it sounds very summoner-esque. Coach cards will specialize in various multiple in-game boosts, and they'll also have formations that will unlock as the coach cards are leveled up. So we, I, again, I didn't see anything specifically about leveled up coach cards unlocking leveled up player cards, but you know we'll, we'll see as we get more information over time. So player cards offer the ability to upgrade via nested NFTs, so unique passive and active skill cards can be slotted into the player cards which is pretty cool because this is something that is not currently available in Splinterlands. Uh, Post-match activity. So after each match, players will tend uh, players will tend to their players. They should probably <laughs> players will tend to their cards is what it probably should have said. Refresh their active team roster, buy card packs, and upgrade their player cards by combining and improving them with new skills and equipment. So here's where it gets interesting. Um, the the only commentary that I have on this is if they're going to be tending to their team roster. It sounds as though, similar to what they're doing with tower defense packs or tower defense cards, maybe your ECR is going to be like an energy that your players have. And every time you play a match, their energy goes down and you can only, uh, you know, you can you can only play for so long before they need to rest and, the, and their energy recoups at a certain rate. Now, there may be some buffs. It sounds like there might be some drinks or sports drinks or things like that where maybe you can boost their energy or I, I don't know. It sounds like there, there could be a, a cool dynamic here, but that's that's what I got from this uh, as like an overall like gameplay. So let's go ahead and jump into the cards now. Uh, so each of these cards can combine with duplicates and gain 
XP experience points to achieve higher levels. So here's the two ways in which cards can be leveled up. So XP, so users can advance in card XP level by playing their card in matches. And then star level, users can advance in card star level, card star level by combining like cards. So this unlocks new skill and equipment slots in each card. So this is kind of cool because keep in mind, when you buy a Furious Chicken off the market in Splinterlands, it doesn't matter how many games that thing is played at. It, if it's played in one game or, uh, you know, 100,000 games, it is going to be the same card no matter what. Whereas here, now this should make for a very interesting marketplace because you can play with a card a, a bunch of times. And if it's like the same star level as another uh, star uh, card, but it has a higher XP level, meaning that it's been played in more games, it's leveled up in that way to potentially get some other boosts. That I, again, I love the focus on the individual cards, and I think that this is this is probably what I'm most excited about in terms of like this game is going to be completely different from, from Splinterlands. I think we're all looking at myself included. We're all looking at it through the lens of Splinterlands, and that's fine. It makes sense, but I think the team is being really creative here and trying some uh, some new things and being very innovative. Um, so combining cards will unlock new slots for equipment and skill. So this is going to come from combining the cards or the star level, which is what's important. So player card, you know, I, they, they had some eye candy, which I, I won't get into here, but they had some, uh, at the, at Splinter Fest. Now, a lot of that is still subject to change. So until we get actual, you know, cards, uh, or, you know, previews of cards, we can dig into it there. But for the most part, you're going to have, you know, your player name and level. There's going to be synergy factors. So represented to convey the synergy of each card. Synergy is going to be a huge thing, uh, both talked about in here as well as during the most recent town hall, which Haytham was talking about, or Don Gorgon. Um, you're going to get abilities. Uh, star level, so it looks like you can go up to 10 stars. Cosmetic image and effects, so the vanity side shows off an image of the player's face and torso. A user can augment this image with cosmetic purchases that will make the front of the card more unique. This sounds like a very, very fancy long way of saying skin. So if they're skins, that's kind of cool. I mean, it's a, it's, a, it's a good way for the team to offer items that people just want to have, right? Uh, as as a, it's a good way for revenue generation, right? We've been talking about that in Splinterlands for a long time, as well as just something that people will be able to get. I mean, look at how much money is spent in games like Fortnite and Apex, or actually, I don't know about Apex, but Fortnite is the one game that I have the most experience with. Uh, so basic player stats, so they'll be, each be able to attack, defend, and special are represented on the bottom left of the card. And then active skills, they will each have up to three active skills. So the back of the card is going to have their passive skill slots, uh, of which there's a maximum of four, and their active skill slots, as well as equipment slots. So reflect the slots allocated for equipment and the associated equipment. So player cards have a fixed number of equipment slots. And so the dynamic stat indicators, these three bars indicate the stamina. So that, uh, what I was talking about in terms of energy earlier, morale, which I don't know how this is going to be measured, and health. And I wonder if like morale is like, what, what if what if your cards were just as sad about losing the game <laughs> as you were? I mean, you guys, are, you guys know that I rage and I get super depressed when I keep losing games. I hate losing. So if the cards are going to get sad too, that's just going to be even worse because we're all, we're all going to be in it together. So I have no idea what morale is, but it sounds interesting. And then health. Uh, there's probably going to be some kind of like RNG for injuries because that is a big part of the game when it comes to uh, when it comes to actually any sport. So not just soccer. So your coach card, you're going to be able to get a non foil, uh, which is the base level and then red, green, blue or orange. Uh, gold foil cards will be kind of like the top tier, but red, blue, green, and orange are going to have the same rarity and be best suited for a certain type of weather condition in the game. Now, uh, I'm kind of teasing from the the town hall that they had, but when it comes to players, they don't want to hurt any players' feelings, which is understandable. And so due to that, there are not going to be any like common, rare, legendary epic. There's going to be different foils, I believe, for the players as well, although we didn't really see that here. Uh, I feel like I remember them talking about that. Uh, but at least for the coach card, they do have it listed here. And then your star level, so users will have the unique opportunity to upgrade the star level by combining cards. So this gets back to your whole NFT, limited amounts, and uh, you know leveling up. And then the coaches will have experience as well. Uh, as they level up through experience, it'll provide the team with different buffs. So just like player cards, a coach's experience will be capped by their star level. So you can keep getting a bunch of XP, but this it's going to be separate from... Your, your star level, and it is going to be limited by your star level. 
So coaches come with a set of formations and that determine the bonus for players starting positions at the time of the match. Uh, coaches come with a number of positions. Okay, we can we can move on from that. Okay, so the synergy system and I, there's there's going to be so much to this that I uh, we we may have to spend more time on this once the cards or we get more information on the cards. But for the just quick rundown here. So the way that synergy works, there's going to be a couple different uh, types, right? So your foil, so meaning that if they have the, the same type of foil, so visual identity on card faces, gain synergy, cards of the opposing foil lose synergy. And then each player is going to have a city. Now keep in mind, there's no teams, but they will have a city, which they probably currently represent and nobody owns cities, right? Uh, addition, so cards of the same addition gain a, uh, a synergy buff. So right now we're really just having Probably the 2023 edition is going to be this first one because it'll come out you know, right before the 2023 season. And then team dynamics. So the team increases synergy cards when they remain together and are played within the same user deck. So this is really cool because if this is going to be tracking how much you're playing with the same team for a while and increase... so. Think of, think of it like streaks, right? But instead of getting a streak only if you win, you get a streak that actually helps you or a streak bonus, I should say, that helps you, right? So if the team has been playing together for a while, if the, you know, or your cards have been playing together, uh, you get maybe some kind of bonus within the game, right? However, synergy will end up working. Um, so they go, they talk about foil. They talk about, uh, so the colors that we were talking about as well. So red is no hot weather. Blue is no cold weather. Uh, penalty. So again, these are these are the I guess the weaknesses that they would have. So green means that there's no rain penalty, and orange means there's no wind penalty. So these are going to be you know the the different types of weather are going to be part of like the rule sets that come in to keep the game interesting and fresh. So again, I, I'm excited at how complicated this game is. If you haven't caught on by now, like there's so much that's going to go into it, which is the same as Splinterlands, but this is going to be great in the sense that like you're going to have to dive deep. And it's going to be an, hopefully an easy game to play, but a difficult game to master. Those are the best types of games out there because they really pull in people who get uh, you know passionate about it and really dive deep into the meta. So um, there's going to be city synergy, so players from the same city, which you know technically means they're on the same team within the, whatever edition that they are bought. Um, and then the team synergy. So teams are a group of player and coach cards used in a match. Each team is comprised of eleven players, eleven starters, nine subs. 10 supplemental players, and a coach. Now, there is a perfect deck buff synergy. So when a player's deck is comprised of cards of complete synergy, they receive an extra buff in matches. So again, we don't really know how that works, what that means. It's all just kind of very high level at this point. But uh, it's exciting just to hear about. Uh, all right, so there'll be three ways in which you can upgrade. So we talked about gaining XP by playing the cards. So this is the proof of play that they're going for. Combining cards, which is what we're used to with Splinterlands, where you get uh, combining cards and level up the stars on the cards. That specifically will unlock uh, slots that you can use to, uh, to put in equipment or, yeah, I guess e equipment. Equipment and active skills, whatever that means. Um, so let's see here. But going back up to the XP, this ensures proof of play or time component adding the value. Players can also put a card in training, so AKA stake it, to gain XP. Now that's interesting too. Um, and I don't think they they talked about that as much. Uh, let's see here. So leveling, so player cards gain XP when a user plays. Users can also put them in training. Uh, so all, car, all new cards will start at level zero. Every experience level requires progressively more XP. So what's interesting here is that these are not gonna be just like, transferable. They're not all going to be like the same. You might start to feel like a, a bit of a connection to your card simply because it's just like, oh, I've been using it for a while. It's won me a ton of games and I put all this XP into it. I can't just trade it out between here and something else, you know? Again, it's the emotional aspect that I think could make it, could make it fun. Uh, all right. So combining, we talked about that. Now badges, so players that achieve hard and rare achievements uh, can earn badge that gives a permanent bonus to one of their card stats. So badges serve as a medium compulsion loop that can start rewarding players earlier than leveling XP can do. So again, we don't have much information, but cards can start earning badges at level one. These badges give extra bonuses. They are permanent uh, and uh, badges can also be reserved for titles they achieve. So like league winner, cup winner, and so on. So again, we don't know the structure of how competition is going to be, but I fully expect it to not be like Splinterlands where it's just like this ongoing 15 day season of like random matches. Uh, I do think that there will be something more structured and similar to the way a soccer slash football season would actually go. Okay. So uh, let's, let's jump through the rest of these. So rewards, 
uh, you will be able to get player buffs. Uh, and it, I believe this is probably going to be similar to what we have right now with like rewards cards, NFTs that come through. So equipment is passive, durable, and can be equipped or removed from the card. If equipment is removed, it is not lost. It will return to your inventory. So think of it like almost like what the items and spells are going to be like when we do get them. Um, so skills can be both uh, active and passive. Uh, they can come as consumable or durable. So durable just means that they are, are permanent. Uh, so a single player card can be upgraded over time. Active skill slots. Okay, so we've gone through that. So buff distribution. So buffs can be acquired as rewards for winning matches and buying them or and buying them on the marketplace or in game shop with GLUSD. So the following are methods for obtaining buffs: so match rewards, league rewards, special game modes, sales bundles, marketplace offerings. Again. I just don't have much information, but I'm excited about that. Now, you will have uh, boosters, all right? So consumables. So there's two types here that they want to talk about. So there's two types of boosters. One is for the user, so the, like myself, uh, and one is for the actual player cards. So foil boosters, right? So these are like your potions. Uh, they will increase the likelihood of like, pulling a red, green, orange, or blue foil card, or you can get a gold booster as well that increases the likely, uh, likelihood of pulling a gold foil card. This is for opening packs, so very similar to potions and splinterlands. Um, player boosters, though, you can get an energy drink that'll increase your stamina. You can get a health drink that'll increase your health. A morale drink, I, I, that sounds weird to drink a morale drink, <laughs> but that'll increase your morale. And then a speed drink to increase uh, player's chance to be in the hand. Uh, I don't know what that means, but we will probably jump into it. And then there will probably be some cosmetic stuff, as we were talking about earlier, where, you know, similar to skins or whatever else they'll be able to do, that, uh, since they do have uh, some kind of licensing worked out. Um, okay, so we can jump into these and then wrap up real quick. So the pack tokenomics, we this is already on sale now. We are in the pre-sale. Um, they are reserving... I believe, let's see, 7.5 million tokens for the first 500,000 sold. And those are not selling very quickly. So you do have a chance to jump in and there are some bonuses. Then there's going to be a 7.5 million reserve for pre-sale one and two. So the first 1 million packs. Now, nobody knows what the price of GLX is going to be. Um, uh, I mean, we may have our, our, uh, our guesses or our estimates, but right now it's hard to actually determine. So I wouldn't buy packs just as an investment. If you want to play the game, buy packs. I have not bought packs yet, but I am planning to. I've gotten a little lazy because of the fact that they have not sold out right away. So I feel like I have some time, going to put together some capital and just buy a couple because I want to play this game. Um, and so they, they talked about their pre-sale incentives. Um, again, we, we don't need to get into all this because I feel like if people really wanted to get in on the pre-sale, they would have done it already. Um, and then we have the reward pools here. And this will probably, we'll save this for a, a future point, but there's 100 million tokens that will be released over 65 months. Now, this is part of the GLS, so Genesis League Sports white paper, right? And so there will be 100 million tokens. That's 5% uh, out of the 2 billion tokens that is being reserved for uh, Genesis League goals, okay? So this is a five, or I'm sorry, not five, but I guess five and a half year release plan, right? 65 months. And you can see here that, 15 million of this is going to the pre-sale pack owners, which is kind of crazy. That's 15% of it. Um, then you get ranked rewards, ranked staking, tournament rewards. Like all this is going to be played out, but I really don't think we're going to get this until Q1, Q2 of next year. So, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll spend more time digesting this, but 15% going to people who are helping to fund the game initially, I think is, I think is good, right? Like I said, I believe in Splinterlands. I believe in what the Splinterlands team is trying to do. And yes, Tower Defense uh, and GLS both seem like, uh, it's an unproven thing. But the team is proven to me. And I do believe that in the long run, they will get it right. And I do believe they have a long time before the next bear mark, I'm sorry, the next bull run to get it right. And so I'm not saying that, you know, you should ape in. This is none of this financial advice. But it's like, if you want to start playing this game when it does come out in 2023, I, I think that... I think that you'll be in a good spot, and I'm glad that they are rewarding people who are doing just that, who are, who are being early adopters. Um, and so, yeah, Genesis League Cup will be released after the start of Genesis League Goals. Details will be... Yeah, so there's still a lot of stuff that is not yet available. So, overall, I'm really excited. I mean, I think that this is going to be great. Uh, obviously, 
Uh, I haven't bought any packs yet, but I do plan on playing this game when it comes out. And I do think that buying packs now, if you are planning on playing, is not a terrible idea. Again, it's not a financial, it's not an investment move, but it's like if you want to buy some packs, depending on where the price of, of GLX goes, think of it as like you're going to get some kind of rebate back, right? So I'm, I don't mind spending $5 on a pack. I will go ahead and do that. But it's like in the same way that if I get cash back by using a certain credit card or a promotion or whatever the case is, that could be kind of good too, right? So I will use it as that and not as a way to like, oh my gosh, what's my ROI? What you know, what's my return on this? I think that it's just way too premature to look at it in that vein. But I am excited for what they have planned, and uh, you know, diving into the the, the white paper was uh, for me exciting. And there's still a lot to come out, right? There's still a lot that is not yet. Uh, fully fleshed out, and uh, I'll probably end up doing a separate video going through the the town hall because they did talk about some interesting things there. But uh, we'll leave this for now. I will catch you all in the next video, and I will see you around the game. Let me know your thoughts if you had a chance to go through the white paper, or if you just listened to me. Let me know what your thoughts are on Genesis League goals. Catch you later.